we are going into a serious subject. The majority of people that believe, they think, Lucifer is Satan. But you have to understand simple things. Our, we have to stand on the scripture, not what the people think. The problem today is we follow tradition, not the word. Someone says something, we just blindly follow and they make a shipwreck of their faith. We have to be grounded in the word. And today there are so many denominations or groups, so many teachings, they twist the word. So as children of God, why we have Bible study? So that everyone is serious about the word. So here in the scriptures, we, why has God given the word? So that we can understand the nature of God, the character. So we read about Abraham, Moses, David, Paul and all those things. As you study the nature, see the advantage with God is, He doesn't change. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass. This can be trusted. Even if anyone is prophesying, anyone is preaching, why we come with the Bible? As believers, we come with the Bible, to the Bible study or to the church also. Why? You are checking. Is it according to the word? Because you have to, Paul says, I kept my faith. That's a serious thing that Paul is saying. He was a Pharisee, knew the law. <coughs> God personally spoke to him. Is it true? Through him, we got the teaching of the Holy Communion. It's not from the apostles he got. He said, I received it from the Lord. Lord. That person is saying, I kept my faith. That means there were occasions in his life when question mark did come. So we have to guard our faith finish the race. It's not a simple thing. And if you have not understood who God is, we will mess up our life. Today many are offended at God. Because the problem with God is, He will not do what you tell Him to do. He will do what He wants. It turn to Daniel chapter 4.35. Once God gave me an opportunity to go to Columbus. Uh, there in the Columbus State University there were some students and we had a small Bible study. <coughs> and I read this verse and they were mad at me. Daniel 4.35 It says, And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? That's God. Do you want a God like that? What does the Bible say? He will do what he wants. Did you get that verse? Daniel 4 35. You know, who said this? Through whose mouth this verse came? Nebuchadnezzar, the king. See, what was the king doing? He looked at his big palace empire and he says, I need it. He's not, he's not a believer. Who? He's not a believer. All that he did was he looked at his empire and he says, verse 30, uh, verse 29 and 30. At the end of 12 months he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spoke and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power for the honor of my majesty? He is saying to whom? Okay. Himself. And then the scripture says, 31, While the word was in the king's mouth, he was just saying it. 
What did God say? What happened to the skin? You know that. For seven years, the big emperor, he is not a king, he is an emperor. Emperor means he has many kings under him. This emperor is eating grass. Can you just imagine? He has his own wise men, he has his doctors, he has his magicians. None of them could restore him. Eating grass in the forest. Can you imagine? It's just like the president of, of the country. He is the president. No one has taken his place. But where is he? Not in the house. <coughs> but in the forest, eating what? Grass. God didn't allow anyone else to sit on the throne. No. Why? Why is God doing that? And then, after seven years, when he comes to his senses, you know what he says? 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. Seven years before, what was he saying? It was I who did everything. After eating grass, he says, we are nothing. And he doeth according to his own will. And none can say, what have you done? Same way in our life, for example. Husband and wife are married. And we say, till death separates. Does the husband or the wife or the kid get the opportunity to tell the other partner that I am going to die? Many times, no one knows. And it's only after the person is gone, we know that he has gone. Why? It's God who gives and God who yes. takes. He will do what he wants, that's why this word of God is there so that I can understand his nature. He will do according to his word, not something else, not something new. And then Romans we read, he doesn't need any counselor. So, usually people think that Lucifer was a good angel, he was an archangel, pride came in, he fell down and since then he is Satan and then he is our biggest enemy and more than God we are frightened with whom? From whom? Satan. Blaming everything. So what has happened is we have given God and Satan the same place. We think that both are equal. You have to always understand one basic thing that the Bible teaches. God is sovereign. You know what is sovereign? He is above everything. He said himself, there is no one before me, neither after me, neither do I know anyone. You read Isaiah chapter 45. Let's take the scriptures. Isaiah 45. Verse 5. It says, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. And then you can read verse 18. Same chapter. For thus saith the Lord who created the heavens, God himself who found the earth and made it, he hath established it, created it, not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. One more verse, 46 verse 5. Yes. 
To whom will he liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be alike? So, according to the scriptures, one simple thing, and we need to be assured of that, that my God is sovereign. Apart from Him, or equal to Him, there is no one. And it is God who is in control of everything. Do you believe that? God has never lost control. Don't think that this world is a runaway train where God has lost control and He wants us to help Him. You know, Moses asked Him, what's your name? And He says, I am. Who I am. God doesn't need any helpers. Never try to help God. You know that incident when King David was taking the ark on the block up. Uzzah, he tried to, what happened? Why? If you and I were there in his place, we would have done the same thing. The ark is about to fall. As a good believer, what did he do? God killed him. Why? Don't ever think that I need your help. I am not dependent on anything or anyone. He is self-existent. That's why he doesn't want us to believe that he is God. He is God. So never try to help God. Never try to remind God. The other day I met, I was talking to a brother. They said, some people say, you have to claim the scriptures. Remind God. These scriptures is not to remind God. The promises. Many times we tell God, Lord, these are the promises you have given. It's not to remind God. It's for our assurance. We never asked these promises in the first place. Did we ask? Look at one incident. The time for Jesus to go has come. Disciples have been there for so long. And he says, let, you, let not your heart be troubled. Why? We are troubled because you are going. Say, I am going to prepare a place for you. Huh? Place? And I come back. Can you imagine the hope that we have? Did we ask for that hope? In the Garden of Eden, we messed up everything, right? And man was not feeling guilty. What did he say? The seed of the woman shall come. So one thing you have to be assured of, my God is on the throne. Nothing will happen without His permission. He is still on the throne. But unknowingly what has happened, we think that God and Satan are equal. <coughs> Satan is not the enemy of God. God doesn't have any enemies. You understand that? I can have him as an enemy because he is like me. We are equal. That's why he can be my enemy. But God doesn't have any enemies because no one is equal to God. So here we come to the subject. Lucifer is an archangel. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Can you take that? Genesis 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the and what does verse 2 say? The earth was void. The earth was without form and void. If God creates anything, will He create anything void or without form? Just with me. 
If he creates something, he will create it very beautifully. So those who are working in the hospital, and you know, you know how beautiful this body has been designed? Doctors are trying their level best, but they, they didn't design it. It's such a beautiful thing. He created out of dust. You look at the flowers. You look at every other thing. It all has been beautifully arranged. From that we understand, God is a God of order. He doesn't create anything void or without form. He doesn't commit any mistakes. God doesn't learn. He doesn't repent like we. He is never sorry. The Bible you read some verses, it says God repented. It's not like we repent. Repent means He is deeply grieved. He is really sorry. Looking at us. So God never commits mistake. He is all knowing. Everything is in control. He created, but verse 2 says, the earth was without form. That means something happened that this beautiful earth became and then from verse 2 on if you see he is separating the dry earth. The earth is already there but it is under the water. He is not creating. It is already there. So he is restoring things. So what happened that he had to restore. Man has been on this earth for around 6,000 years. But you have, have you heard of dinosaurs? Is it true? True or not? Yes. They are. The dinosaurs were there. But you have to understand, they were not when man was here. They were in the pre-Adamite world. When Lucifer was reigning, there were dinosaurs. Lucifer is not like a man like us. You read Ezekiel chapter 28. I think the other day I had taken that. 28. Verse 12 and 13. Son of a man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou seest of the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been made in the garden of Eden, every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, the gold, the workmanship of thy timbrels and of thy fruits was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Right? So here we are looking at Lucifer, not made out of dust. His body is different. Everything is in him. He was, you have to understand, in the Bible, there are three names of archangels. There are three archangels mentioned in the Bible. Can you name them? Name them. Who are they? One is Lucifer. His job is he is a worshiper. Designed to lead the worship. He is on the mount of the Lord. He used to ascend up. He, there was a garden of Eden here. Before Adam, Lucifer fell, he was ruling. He had his rule. And from here he used to ascend up. Because of that, what happened? Pride came in. Verse 15 says, no, 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covered, and I have set thee so, Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. So the first archangel is whom? Lucifer. What's his purpose? Worship. Worship. Number two, it's Michael. What's his work? He is a warrior. And his, the angels under his charge are called as cherubs. Cherubs are cherubims. They are the army of Michael. They are warriors. Number three, it's Gabriel. He is the messenger. You know, cherubims were kept at the gate of Garden of Eden to guard. Cherubs 
are really ferocious angels. They are the army. Why has God made them? You have to understand, we as children of God, we are studying the word. And you are coming from Kokutlam, you are coming from all places. You think that the enemy likes it? He is trying his level best from day one that we should not study the word. But can you see how the Lord is in charge? He is arranging everything. Why is the enemy so mad? Because he knows one thing. If I study the word, my tricks won't work. He wants one thing, that the people don't study the word. He wants you to pray. Pray. But don't study the word. Why? If you study the word, your prayer will change. But if you don't know the word, you'll keep on praying. That's why the Bible says, Romans 8, 26, you know that? What does it say? We don't know how to pray. Once you know the word, your prayer will change. But if you are ignorant of the word, you will keep on babbling. You will keep on, today majority of people, they are not praying, they are nagging, complaining, they are grumbling. But we call all of that as prayer. Prayer is a talk. Initially we pray, but as we grow in the Lord, what happens? You start talking. And talk is two way. You also talk and he also talks. Now have you seen people talking on the phone? Can you give me a phone? Can you have a phone? Anyone? Yeah, can you have a phone? Have you seen people talking on the phone? You don't see anyone around, but he is so excited. Yeah? Keep it quiet. Yeah? Then he talks for some time, then he smiles, he gets angry, and can you see him walking? He can't stand still, he goes there, comes here, then goes there, then comes here. What's happening? He, he, he's hearing someone on the other side. That's why he's so excited. But if you have you seen people praying, it's the same monotone. Monotone means same words, just like the computer talking. And you know, look at our prayers. We keep on saying the same prayers every day. It doesn't change. Why? You don't see the other, you are not hearing the other person's prayer. So, as I was saying, the devil is mad. He doesn't want us to study. He's trying his eclairness. There are cherubs who are fighting a battle for us so that we can sit and study the word. It's not Gabriel who is doing. Who is doing that? Cherubs are doing. So that we can come before the word and know the word. Number three is Gabriel. What's his job? Messenger. So, how many archangels? Three. Lucifer, worship leader. Number two, Michael, the warrior. Number three, Gabriel, the messenger. So, Lucifer was created to worship. Yes, we worship God, but our worship and the worship of angels are different. We have been created to have a relationship with God. So apart from this, you know, there are two other groups. They are the seraphims. One is seraphim. The seraphims have six wings. The two they cover the face, two they cover the feet, and two they fly. They are saying one to another, holy, holy, holy. They are the seraphims. And next, the next group is our guardian angels, the ministering angels. There are always angels with us. Why they are there? Not because we are good, but because we are the temple of the living God. 
So, who created Lucifer? Who created all of them? God. It's God who created. Ezekiel 28, 15 says, Can you read it in Romanian? Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in him. I just want you to, I won't take long, just briefly I just want you to understand. What does the scripture say? Lucifer was perfect. One thing, the word Lucifer is only there in the King James. Here it says, this archangel was perfect till iniquity was found. Means that there was a time that he walked without committing any mistake. Fine. As I told you earlier also, any doctrine that comes, it should have three tests. One, Old Testament, shadow. Number two, Jesus should have said it. Number three, apostles should have read. <laughs> so here, word of God says, thou was perfect till iniquity was found. So turn to the words of Jesus. John chapter 8. Verse 44. Can you read it in Romanian? Voi aveți de tată pe diavolul și vreți să întâlniți poftele tatălui vostru el de la început a fost ucigat și nu stă în adevăr pentru că în el nu este adevăr. Ori de câte o spune, o minciună vorbește din ale lui că este mincinos și tatăl mincinos. Sorry. No problem, I can see people. <laughs> then I can teach. Yeah, I'll read it. Here it says, Ye are of your. See, look at the words of Jesus. See, when we study the Bible very carefully, especially the words of Jesus. Here it says, Ye are of your father the what, Lucifer? Yeah. What does the Romanian say? Yeah. Devil. Yeah. We say, who is Satan? Lucifer. But what does the Bible say? Now we are looking at the words of Jesus. He is calling him? Yeah. Devil. You know, Satan and devil are the same person. Satan is the Hebrew word, Satanus. Devil is the Greek word. You understand? But both are the same. New Testament is written in Greek. And what is Jesus saying? You are of your father the devil. And then, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the from the beginning, right? And abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Who is saying that? God or Jesus himself. What is he saying? The devil. He is a murderer from when? Beginning. When, when he speaks a lie, he is speaking it of himself. See, when we say a lie, we are influenced by someone. But here, we have to understand a simple thing. Jesus is not calling Lucifer. Apart from the Isaiah chapter 14, Nowhere in the Bible is Satan called Lucifer. If Lucifer is his name, there should be his name mentioned in the book of Revelation also. Do you find that name? 
No? And then, turn to 1st John. Chapter 3, verse 8. The apostle is saying, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the what's the word? Beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So from these two verses, what do we understand? This fellow, devil, he has never been perfect. Jesus said and the apostles say, he is a murderer or he is sinning from day one. But the person mentioned in Ezekiel, there was a time he was perfect. Till iniquity was Found. You understand? So is there a contradiction? Doesn't Jesus know? Or is Jesus speaking of someone else? The biggest problem is Satan has been so clever that he has concealed these things so that you don't know who he is. And he can work. Here Jesus is clearly saying from the beginning. Apostles are also saying from the beginning. But Ezekiel says he was perfect till he fall. fall. And another thing you have to understand. We say Satan is fallen. Right? So if he has fallen, turn to Job chapter 1. Book of Job, chapter 1, verse 6. Can you read that in the name? Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So, this is the heavenly board meeting with God. Who all are gathered? Sons of God. Who is also there? If Satan has fallen, then how can he go there? Job says, book of Job, and then in the verses down, you see God and Satan talking, right? Is it there? Verse 8, uh, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, From where comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? And there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, who hath feared God and shunneth evil. Who is mentioning about Job? God or Satan? God. Uh, who is mentioning? Who is bringing the fire? Of job. Satan or God? God? It's God. And we say he is fallen. If he is fallen, then what is he doing there? We think that we say Satan is the enemy of God, but the Bible says God and Satan are at talking terms. Do they talk? That's what the Bible says. God is asking Satan, have you seen? My servant Job. And then verse 9 And Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? Has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Who is saying that? God or Satan? Satan. Who is saying that? It is Satan who is giving a testimony. God, you put the hedge. That means, till you lift the hedge, I can do nothing. Who is saying that? 
Say it. So things you have to understand. He attends the board meeting. Now, now, now one of you, our brother Nirma was one of was in our board in our company, and I knew that this guy is trying to destroy our work, so I fired him. You won't get lost. You're fired. Will you come for the next board meeting? No. But we say Satan has fallen, and the scripture says he's up there in the board meeting. What's that? You have to understand, Satan has not fallen till now. He is going to fall. That's when the tribulation period, Michael will fight with him. Then he will be thrown down and then he will come into Antichrist. Till that time, he has the freedom to go anywhere he wants. He has not fallen till now. The same person who is talking to God about the same person Jesus mentions. Luke chapter 22. Verse 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Here, I would just want you to understand. What is Jesus saying? Simon, what has Satan asked? He has asked permission. Not to destroy you, but to save you as wheat. From that, what we understand? If Satan has to do anything, he needs permission from God. Why? God is sovereign. He will not allow anyone to do anything on his own because he is the creator. And he has created this earth with a purpose. Even Satan, if he has to do something, he needs permission from whom? God. According to this scripture, has Satan been given permission? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Jesus says, I have given the permission and I know you will fail. I know. Because what was the permission asked for? Not to destroy you but to sift as wheat. That's the reason. And I know you will fail but I know. One more thing. After you are converted, after you understand your mistake, strengthen the others. So from these things we understand one single thing. Satan has not fallen. If he has fallen, he cannot come to God. He cannot talk. If he has fallen. The other thing is, Lucifer and Satan. Lucifer was perfect till iniquity was found. Jesus and the apostle says, Satan has been sinning from the beginning. So now, coming to a close, simple thing. In the Garden of Eden, who planted the tree? God. If the tree was not there, if the tempter had not come, will man fall? Yesterday we were studying, man was not holy, but he was innocent. If the tree is not there, and if the tempter doesn't come, can he fall? No. no. Are you sure? Hundred yeah. percent? If he falls on his own, then it's not his mistake, it's the Creator's mistake. If man falls without the tree and the serpent, tempter, then it's not man's mistake, it will be whose mistake? God's mistake. But here we see, the tempter comes. The tree is there. That's why man 
Fair. Now look at the temptation of Jesus. Who comes? The same one who came in the garden is before whom? Jesus. What is Jesus saying? Lucifer, get out. Get thee behind. Satan. He comes. The same one who came in the garden of Eden came before whom? Jesus. And then the same guy enters Peter. When Jesus is saying about his crucifixion and all, he enters. And what is Jesus saying? Jesus is not calling Peter Satan. Jesus is calling Satan who has entered. And you know the life of Jesus. Jesus says, the prince of the world is coming and I am not going to talk. Why? Satan when he came, Jesus would sense. And he says, I am not going to reveal myself. That's another thing. But our subject is, he has not yet fallen. And then, in the garden of Eden, until and unless there is an external agency, you will not fall. Many times we think that Lucifer, pride came and he fell. If he falls on his own, then it is the mistake of the creator. There was some fault in creation, that's the reason he fell. You have to understand simple one thing. Before man was tested, it's the nature of God. He will test everyone. And who was tested? The angels were tested. Lucifer was reigning. Lucifer fell. After that, the same one who worked to destroy Lucifer comes in the garden. Who fell? Man fell. And after that, the same guy comes before Jesus. Jesus overcame. You have to understand, other than an external agency, no one will fall. So the question is, who is this guy? From where has he come? Turn with me to Isaiah 54. Verse 16. A bit before 54, you turn to 45. Verse 7. English it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Is it like that in Romania? What is God saying? I form the light and create. That means darkness has a creator. Darkness doesn't come on its own. It has been created. Next, I make peace and create. Who is saying that? Is it there in your Bible? Romanian? No? Not there? You can you read it again? Eu întocmesc lumina și fac întunericul. Eu dau propășirea și aduc restriștea. Eu, Domnul, fac toate aceste lucruri. Is God saying, I am the one doing? Yes. It doesn't say evil. It doesn't say evil. It says like, Evil. It's the exact opposite of good. You have to understand, there is a difference between sin and evil. Many times we confuse these two. Sin is not evil. Evil is not sin. Turn with me to Isaiah 54. 
verse 16. Iată eu am făcut pe meșterul care suflă cărbunii în foc și face o armă după meșteșugul lui. Dar tot eu am făcut și pe nimicitor ca să o sfărâme. It says, Behold, I have created the smith that blow the coals in the fire and that bring it forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Is it there? Who is the creator? God. Can you accept it? It's hard to accept that a loving God will create someone to destroy me. But if you don't understand it properly, you will not understand God. Who has designed it? God says, I do it. Another example for that is, you know, in the Bible, who destroyed the earth with the flood? Satan or God? No. Are you sure? Yes. No. Next. You know about Israel leaving Egypt. Who killed the firstborn? God or the destroyer? The destroyer. Who God is doing it? God sent the destroyer. Turn with me to the incident. Exodus chapter 12. Let's look at the Bible. You can go home, check, double check. Is it a wrong doctrine? Exodus chapter 12. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Who is doing it? God. Next, verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he see the blood upon the lintel, and see the blood, and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not permit the destroyer to come into your house to smite you. What does that mean? Who is who is walking? And is the destroyer there with him? God is walking through the streets of Egypt along with him, just like you have a dog on the leash. Who is on the leash? The destroyer. Who is walking with him? God. God says, wherever I see the blood. You have to always understand, Satan has got nothing to do with the blood. The blood is not protecting us from Satan. The blood is protecting us from the justice of God. You understand that? Satan has got nothing to do with the blood. Who told Israel to apply the blood? God. And who is looking at the blood? Not Satan, but God. Blood has to do something with God, not Satan. We are not saved from Satan. We are saved from the judgment of God. Is it true? Wages of sin is death. It is not Satan who will be taking us to hell. It will be God who will be sending man to hell. Because he is justice. We are not saved from Satan. We are being saved from the condemnation of God. What is the condemnation? The wages of sin is death. Why is God looking at the blood? When he looks at the blood, what is God seeing? He's seeing his beloved son who will be offered. Number two, blood shows already death has entered this house. Death will not enter again. Wherever there is no blood mark, who will enter? 
God says, I will not permit the. Is it written? In your remaining? I will not permit wherever I see the blood. From that you have to understand this is the best illustration in the scripture. Satan is there. But he is on the leash. And the leash is in whose hands? Just don't worry about him. The creator is with us. So the question is, why this destroyer then? Devil is not that deadly, but the one who is inside us, he, you need to be careful. He says, vengeance belongs to me. That's why don't play with God. So, why has he been designed? That to always understand, God is justice. He created this universe for one simple thing. What's it? He wants all of us to be heirs of God. And who is the perfect person to test us? Who is the perfect one? This fellow. He will come. You know, for every car or a cell phone, once the thing is made, there is quality control, right? QC. What does QC do? Quality control. Will it destroy it? And who has put it there? It's the same company that makes the product, that puts the quality control in place. Their job is one simple thing. Don't show any mercy. Make sure that this thing is perfect. If there is any mistake in this, it should not go out. It has to come back. So what does quality control do? It tests the product without any mercy. And when this thing is tested, they put a sticker, OK, tested. You understand? Why is this destroyer there? We have been created to sit on the throne. We are not going to have him to sing songs. If we have to sit on the throne, who is the best one to test us? Who? This person. He will come. He will not destroy you. All that he does is, he puts a question mark. It's just like that teacher. She teaches, and then you have to appear for the exams also, right? Why exams? Uh, kids, they want to go to school, but there should be no exams, right? <coughs> if there are no exams, we all love to go to school, but we hate exams. So why this person is there? Not to destroy us. He's there to test. But then the question is, then why is he going to hell? Why is he going to hell? He tested angels who fell. Lucifer fell. He comes to the garden, puts a question. Man falls. Man also the same thing. See, look at fall of Lucifer and fall of man. It was the same. Lucifer also, till iniquity was found, he was on the mount. Adam also, till iniquity was found, he was in the garden. And then, we see, he comes to Christ the same way. What did Jesus do? Overcome. And the same person, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, I have given him permission. And the same guy goes to heaven also. And God says, from where are you coming? Just going around, doing my rounds. Did you find anyone? No? Okay, I have someone. And then when he comes, he comes with whose permission? And we say, get out, Satan. So he'll say, come on, shut up. I got permission from there. And why I have come? Not to destroy you, just to test you. Is God good? And when does he come? 
when things are gloomy, when God is not answering your prayers, when there are problems in your life, you say, yeah brother, God is not good. There is curse in your life. Some generational curse. And what do you do? Yeah. God is not good. No point in praying. Not going to church. And what does Satan do? Sends this back to the factory. He's not fit to sit on the throne. He doesn't trust God. You understand? So what did Jesus do? What is he saying? Ephesians chapter 6 and this verse. Verse 11. Uh, 10 and 11. Cel ce s-a pădărit este același cu cel ce s-a făcut mai presus pe toate cerurile ca să împlă toate lucrurile. Și el a dat pe mine apostol, pe alții proroși, pe alții evangeliști, pe alții păstori. Nu, nu, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. În folă fraților, în tariții vandolului și în puterea tăriei lor, îmbrăcați-vă cu toată armatura lui Dumnezeu ca să puteți ținea piept împotriva înaltirilor diavolului. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He will come with this sweet talk. All that you have to do is resist the devil. You putting a question mark concerning the faithfulness of God? I know he is faithful. Though he is not answering my prayers, he is good. He is good. What is I can in fact say? Grudgingly. Grudgingly, I approve him for the throne. Not happily, but grudgingly. I tried, tried my level best to throw him down. Man, he has confidence in God. <laughs> That's why God also says, My just shall live by faith. So Satan is not there to just tell God who all is good. God knows. But why is he there to teach us? So why is Satan going to hell? He has been created to test, but instead of doing quality control, he's trying his level best to destroy us. He's tempting us. That's the reason. Where is he going? Where is he going? It's just like, see, now you know, when the economy goes down, big, big companies, they are scaling down people. They have hired someone who is a master in human resources. They hired me and I look at the whole profile of all the employees and then I say, if the company has to strong, you fire Cornell, A, B, C, D, just fire them. And the company economy will be good. Yeah, fine, thank you. Thank you for the report. At the end, you two are fired. <laughs> You understand? Just because you because you were hired so that the company can. Finally, he did his work. Thank you. Created this universe. For simple one thing, life is very serious. Why he created man is his own image and likeness. What was the need for him to come down himself? What was the need for him to make us his temple? Not to take some people to heaven. He wants some who are like him. That's the bride. Who is like God. Mature and strong. I hope it's great. Now I want you to go home. Think. Pray. Check. Because if it is the word of God, it will stand. But today the problem is majority of people, they don't like a God who will create. Because they say, God is so good. He won't allow any 
pain. But if you look at the whole scripture, who is hard with us? God. A simple illustration. God brought Israel out of Egypt. Is it true? Delivered them? How many? Three million. But what happened to Israel? He killed all of them in the wilderness. Only two escaped. It's not devil. Who did it? It's God. So why he does that? Life is very serious. You just don't have to worry. The Creator is with you. But he wants you to trust him. So what does Satan do? Comes and puts it. Question mark. Resist him and you will overcome. Those who overcome will sit on the throne. Can we just stand and pray? How great our God is. Thank you, Lord.